So let's talk about one of the most fundamental problems in all of computing. Seriously, it's this. How do you get computers to trust each other when, you know, they can't inherently trust each other? And we're not just talking about things breaking. We're talking about building systems that can withstand outright deception. Okay, so to really get this, you first have to understand that not all system failures are created equal. Not at all. On one side, you've got what's called a crash fault. A server just stops working. It's basically a broken tool. It's annoying, sure, but it's predictable. But then, then you have a Byzantine fault. And this is something else entirely. It's so much more sinister. The server doesn't just crash. It turns into a traitor. It becomes an enemy inside the gates, and it's actively trying to bring the whole system down. So here's how we're going to break this down. We'll start with this unseen war happening in our code, then dive into the legendary story that gave it a name. We'll see how it went from just an idea to a practical solution, understand the incredible power of what's called absolute finality, and finally, look at how this whole thing is still shaping our world today. All right, first up, how does a simple hardware problem, something just breaking, turn into a problem of outright deception? We're kind of moving from a purely technical issue to something that's almost philosophical. How do you even establish what's true? A Byzantine fault is not just a server going offline. That would be easy. No, this is a server that's actively trying to sabotage everything. Imagine it tells one part of your network, hey, everything's cool, but at the exact same time, it's telling another part, emergency shutdown. It lies, and it can lie in totally random, malicious ways, which makes it by far the hardest kind of failure to deal with. I love this phrase for it, computational gaslighting. It just perfectly captures the essence of the problem, doesn't it? How can one computer possibly trust the information it's getting from another when that other computer might be actively trying to make it doubt its own reality? This leads to a huge question. How in the world do you build a reliable system out of parts that could be unreliable or even worse, flat out deceptive? And that quote just nails it. It really illustrates the crisis of knowledge this creates. Just picture two engineers staring at the same network. One of them sees an all clear signal. The other sees a shutdown command. And both signals are coming from the same faulty component. No single part of the system has any way to know what the real truth is. And that, well, that can lead to total paralysis. So to solve this mess, three computer scientists, Leslie Lamport, Robert Shostak, and Marshall Pease, did something brilliant back in 1982. They created a story, a powerful analogy about a group of Byzantine generals surrounding a city. They all need to agree on a battle plan, but here's the catch. They know that some of them might be traitors. For the good guys, the loyal generals, to have any chance of winning, their communication system had to guarantee two absolutely critical things. First, agreement. All the loyal generals have to end up on the same page. No half attacking, half retreating. That's a disaster. And second, validity. If the commander is loyal, his orders have to be followed, period. The system has to make sure there's unity and loyalty, even when you know there are traitors in your midst. And this is where they dropped the bombshell. The paper's most famous discovery was this little mathematical law. To handle X traitors, you need a minimum of 3F plus 1 total generals. So think about that. To handle just one traitor, you don't need three generals. You need four. And this isn't just a suggestion. It's a mathematical proof. It's impossible otherwise. But why that specific number? Why so many? Why can't just three generals manage to overcome one single traitor? Well, let's walk through the simplest impossible scenario, because it really shows you why the math here is just so unforgiving. Okay, so put yourself in the shoes of a loyal general. The whole problem boils down to your point of view. In one scenario, your commander is loyal and orders attack, but your other colleague, the traitor, lies to you and says the order was retreat. In another scenario, your commander is the traitor. He tells your loyal buddy to attack, but he tells you to retreat. Now here's the killer part. From where you stand, both situations look exactly the same. You've received one attack message and one retreat message. There is absolutely no way for you to know who's lying. Any decision you make is a total gamble. Now, for almost 20 years, this whole problem was mostly just a thought experiment. It was theoretical. Early solutions were cool, but they only worked under perfect lab conditions, not on messy, unpredictable networks like, you know, the internet. But then, in 1999, two researchers, Miguel Castro and Barbara Liskov, finally cracked the code and figured out how to make it work in the real world. 
their solution had to be way more robust than anything that existed before. See, most systems use something called crash fault tolerance, or CFT. It basically assumes nodes only fail by crashing. They just go offline. But BFT? BFT assumes the absolute worst. It assumes nodes can be actively malicious. This means you need more nodes to make it work, that 3F plus 1 number again, but it's absolutely essential for any environment where you can't just blindly trust everyone involved. And what they came up with was called Practical Byzantine Fault Tolerance, or PBFT. And it was a total game changer. First off, it was built specifically for networks like the internet, where messages can get delayed or even lost. But second, and this was the real shocker, it was fast, like really, really fast. And this is the aha moment right here. Castro and Liskov actually built their system and proved that it was only about 3% slower than a standard system with zero security. This was huge. It proved that you could have this Fort Knox level of security without completely crippling the system's performance. It made Byzantine fault tolerance not just possible, but actually practical. So how does it actually work? Well, think of it like a really high-stakes board meeting. First, you have the pre-prepare phase. The leader, kind of like the CEO, proposes an action. Then comes the prepare phase. This is where all the board members talk amongst themselves to confirm that they all received the exact same proposal. No funny business. Finally, once a supermajority of them agree, they all move to the commit phase, where they cast a final, binding vote that locks that decision in for good. So, after all that complexity, what's the big payoff? What do you get? Well, you get this incredibly powerful guarantee called absolute finality. And trust me, this is not just some techie detail. It's a critical feature that completely changes what you can build on a network. This really highlights a huge difference in how systems achieve certainty. A system like Bitcoin, for example, offers what's called probabilistic finality. Your transaction gets more and more secure over time, but mathematically, it never quite hits 100%. That's why you have to wait for confirmations. BFT systems, on the other hand, give you absolute finality. The second the protocol commits, that transaction is 100% final. It's irreversible. And it happens in seconds, not an hour. And this is where it gets personal. I mean, let's bring it right back to you. If you were sending a huge amount of money or signing a critical digital contract, what kind of guarantee would you want? Do you want probably final or 100% final? For things like finance or really any critical infrastructure, the difference between probably and absolutely, well, it's everything. All right, let's fast forward to today and see how this timeless dilemma, this whole quest for trust in a trustless world, is still being played out in some of our most advanced systems. The journey has just been remarkable when you think about it. It started as this abstract, theoretical problem back in 1982. Then it became a practical solution in 1999. And today, BFT is basically the bedrock of modern high-security systems, especially in the world of enterprise blockchain, where you simply cannot take trust for granted. But the story's not over. Today, the big challenge is scale. The original PBFT gets bogged down when you add too many nodes because the communication just grows exponentially. But innovators are finding really clever ways around this. Hyperledger Fabric, for instance, switched PBFT to protect against insider threats. And projects like Zilliqa are optimizing the heck out of it with advanced cryptography, letting PBFT's core principles secure absolutely massive networks. So at the end of the day, the really crucial takeaway is this. That 40-year-old thought experiment about ancient generals, it's still one of the most vital questions we have to answer. As we build more and more of our world on distributed code, from our financial systems to our AI, the ability to mathematically prove who to trust isn't just some academic exercise anymore. It's the very foundation of our entire digital future. 